Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second se- episode of the fourth season of the Jake's Take with Jacob Aishar podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Aishar, chief content producer and writer of chicksteak.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. Before we get started, if you're watching this on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. Now, if you're li- listening to this on our audio platforms, please give us a five star review and please download. All right, for the second episode of 2023, I'm so happy to welcome my guest on my right. She, you may have known her from El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie, and Mayans MC. And she also stars in 12 Slaves of Christmas. And as of this recording right now, she has over 15,000 Twitter followers and over 124,000 Instagram followers. Please help me welcome Cody, Renee, Cameron to the podcast. Hello. Hi, Cody. How are you today? So good. We're so well. I just got back from uh, Mayans fitting for season five. So rode my motorcycle over to uh, Santa Clarita and uh, yeah, I'm excited. Oh, wow. Congratulations on season five. I, I, I cannot wait to tell, talk more about that show. So, but we got a lot to get, we got a lot of ground cover. So let's get started. So when do you get interested in performing? How did that passion evolve and desire to pursue a career in the entertainment industry? So when I was about eight years old, I rented Cats the Musical on VHS and I was like, my face melted watching it. I was like, what is happening? All these crazy costumes and music. And I knew that I wanted to do that, whatever that was. And it took me quite a long time to then move to LA and figure it out. But um, that was my first little taste of what like entertainment, the entertainment world could be like. Awesome. Awesome. So Many Breaking Bad fans are might recognize you from your role as Candy from the El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. So how did you get involved with this film? And what were some of the lessons that you learned from that experience to help you grow as an actor? So the Breaking Bad movie was a funny one because I got an audition through my agent, which is pretty normal. Um, a lot of times they'll, they won't tell you what the project is, but they'll be like, oh, it's this showrunner who did this project and they're you know kind of just maybe doing a youtube thing or their own little side project they make it seem like it's not a big deal so i auditioned and i it's great because then you don't feel any pressure you're like oh whatever this is just some little thing and i didn't know because that was when they kept top secret until um i was already on the airplane flying to new mexico and then it leaked that they were making a breaking bad movie and my manager was like calling me and he's like you're in the breaking bad movie you're in the breaking bad movie and i was like what are we what what do you mean no it, the the code name was called greenbrier and i was like no i'm going to go shoot greenbrier and he's like no it's the breaking bad movie and um yeah that was crazy but the audition was so fun because um it was like a party girl scene and the girls like really hung over and kind of over it. And so uh, I got to improv a lot. Like she, like the casting director was just like, imagine that these guys are like giving you a hard time, feel free to improv. And so I got to really play in that world. And as a bartender, I like, well, I'm not a bartender now, but I used to be, I could draw on a lot of experiences of, you know, being over it, you know, it's, it's late and um, yeah. And then when I got to set, um, Vince Gilligan, who's the director, showrunner, creator, writer, all the things, um, also really loved us to improv. So um, I slip in a line there about wanting to go home to my dog and that's my dog Cheeto. So it was, <laughs> that was cool. It's amazing because not a lot of actors can say that they've been on a franchise that's been extremely popular. Yeah, that was a that was a really cool one to, to be a part of. And like, it's the movie, you know, and the premiere was so cool. That was, um, my first ever premiere was the Neon Demon, and I got to walk the red carpet behind Keanu Reeves, which like swoon. But um, but Breaking Bad was really cool because they uh, like blocked off this whole street, and they had Aaron Paul do this stunt in the Camino, in the El Camino, and um, the the red carpet was like a whole block long with fans from Iota on like either side, and so um, I was so shy like walking the red carpet and then turns out my dress was like a little bit see-through in the lights which I didn't know but you know the, the press had a fun time with that and <laughs> um, yeah it was just crazy to be a part of. All right so in addition to El Camino which is a which is a part of the Breaking Bad universe you're also part of another successful show in universe which is the Mayans MC so what attracted you to this show? motorcycles <laughs> um i started riding motorcycles uh almost 
10 years ago and fell in love with everything, with riding, with the freedom of it, with the culture. Um, right now, my Sportster has pink flames, and I just added a little sissy bar on the back. That's like the part that sticks up that you could either lean back again if you had, if you had a passenger, or you could like attach a backpack to. And it's a black Playboy bunny with pink, a pink eye, pink ears, and then a skull and crossbones tie. So it's like so cute. And um, yeah, I auditioned for that, which is also kind of a bartender role, I'm getting all these bartender roles. Um, and then they kept writing me in. So then I became a Sons of Anarchy girlfriend. And then um, spoilers if you haven't seen season four, but my boyfriend ends up getting killed last season. So I didn't know if they were going to bring me back. And then I just got an email uh, like a week or two ago saying they were going to bring me back and then that I will also probably be in future episodes. They really give you like as little information as possible because they also don't want you to leak anything, <laughs> which I could see how that would be. Tom Holland, I see how that could be um, easy to do. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> I think everyone I think everyone has known as from the end of the 20, 2010s to now, a Tom Holland cannot be tolerated. No, for those of you who don't know, Tom Holland spoiled Avengers Endgame and got in trouble with Marvel and Disney, and I'm just glad that he's still alive. <laughs> no hits on Tom Holland yet. Um but yeah, if I could have chosen a TV show to be in, it would have been like, if you asked me this a few years ago, I would have said Sons of Anarchy, but the show ended. And so to have the opportunity to play a Sons of Anarchy girlfriend in the spinoff is just, it's an honor, really. Like, I'm, I love it. And the, by the way, those are two, first the Breaking Bad franchise and now the Sons of Anarchy franchise, two intense dramas of, of the 2010s and 2020s yeah definitely all right so what have been some of the challenges that you face continue to stay active in the entertainment industry and how do you overcome those obstacles i think um actually funny you ask because in breaking bad i do get i do get i actually had this whole scene written in the warehouse they got cut so i really i thought that was going to be my big break and then you know, if you saw the movie, you see that Aaron Paul just kind of looks in the window and you kind of see us and then he looks away. You only see us entering and exiting. There was a whole scene in the warehouse and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to be a star. Um, but it got cut. <laughs> you, you know, say lovey. But um, I was nude in that. The nudity got cut. And then in my end, um, I also do have a sex scene in the second episode I was in. So there's, so my point is that I do a lot of nudity work. And I think that um, even though, you know, it's 20, almost 2023, the stigma around that has um, gone way, way, way down. Like I posed for Playboy like oh God, 15 years ago, maybe. And I've worked a lot for Playboy. And a lot of people said when that happened that they were like, you're going to really make the pool that you could work in a lot smaller. And I haven't had that experience at all. It's actually given me a lot of opportunities where other girls turn down the nude roles. But then trying to break out of the nude roles is so hard because there are only, you know, there's a certain group of girls that will do the nudity. So they, they want to keep you in those roles. And you're like, no, 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 I can do more than that. I am more than just my big voluptuous boobs. There is more to me. And so um, breaking out of that uh, is definitely been challenging and um it continues to be a challenge. And now that I, I associate produce for Full Moon as well, um, the 12 Slaves of Christmas, which I know we'll get into, I'm an associate producer on. And getting to work with casting instead of being in front of the camera, being behind the camera, I see why once you find girls that will do that, you, you keep sticking them there because you're like, well, I have actress one and actress two. They're both equally talented, but one girl will do nudity and one won't. So we'll give the non-nude girl the lead that doesn't have nudity and we'll give the naked girl the naked girl stuff, you know? And um, it's crazy because there's so many talented actresses. I mean, I don't even think I'm in the top 50% of talented actresses, but I book because I'm just willing to go balls to the wall for everything. And, you know, I'm like, I'm nice and I'm fun and, and I'm, I'm talented, but I see girls that are more talented than me um, that sometimes don't work because there's just, there's, I mean, there's so many challenges. I feel like I could talk all day about it, but that's definitely one of them. <laughs> Absolutely. I did talk to some of my friends, did talk to some of my guests in the, who are also actors and they've also said that it's very difficult overcoming an opposite stereotype or being typecasted. Yeah, definitely. And it's so crazy to me that we, you know, we frown, like we frown upon Hustler 
because it's like open leg nudity, but we praise Playboy because it's classy closed leg nudity. And we admire women like em like Amelia Clark, who does Game of Thrones and has sex scenes and is nude. But if someone were a porn star, we don't like that. You know, it's like we, we you know, society kind of picks and chooses who gets to play and who doesn't and who gets respect and who doesn't. And um, that's really crazy. And I also hope that I could be an advocate for breaking that. You know, I, I want people to feel comfortable in their bodies 100% and be able to do whatever they want. If they want to be naked, be naked. But also, you know, just because you do nude things doesn't mean that you deserve a level of disrespect. Absolutely. Absolutely. And same with, and same with podcasters as well, because I'm, I like, sometimes I have, sometimes I'm like very, it's very tough to get some big names on us here, but like others and like others, it has, however, we're all on a journey and there's all sorts of different things. I thought you were going to say you're a naked podcaster. Oh, I am not a naked podcaster. <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> Cody, I have never laughed this hard on a podcast ever. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All righty. We got to get back up. We got to get this train back on the track. So let's talk about 12 Slaves of Christmas. So can you describe this film? to my audience and how is it helping expand the holiday horror thing? Okay. So 12 Slays of Christmas is super fun. It's the whole uh, cliche that we play upon where three girls, three pretty girls get stuck in the snow in the middle of nowhere, no, no cell service. So they're walking for help and they come across this creepy mansion with a creepy man inside. And then the shenanigans ensue. So, um, uh, we find this book called The Twelve Slays of Christmas, S-L-A-Y-S, -S, right? It's a play on slaves like Santa Slay, um, but obviously is insinuating death. And um, we start to read the book, and then each story is a throwback to a full moon character, like the ginger dead man and evil e Evie from Evil Bong. And so it's really cool because um, my character helps weave the story through as we flash back to these other characters and their stories. And um, if you saw the trailer, that part is super gory and scary, but then our part is like pretty cute and funny. So there's like a fun juxtaposition there. And um, I got to cast my two really good girlfriends, Lauren, Lauren Ann Smith and Dare Taylor. And they are just so delightful to work with. Um, they're absolutely lovely and hilarious. And in the trailer, they even, they put all these funny little moments and um, yeah, we have all the little figurines of the characters and then, oh my gosh, it's, it was just, it was really fun to film. Um, we actually filmed our part in two days, um, 20 pages in two days, which is insane. And then we used uh, old footage of the character of the other characters throughout the story Oh, bless you. Did you just Thank you. <laughs> you were muted, but I, I could see it. Um yeah, and we had fake snow and the um the the house was all decorated, but this was before Halloween, but it's all decorated in Christmas. And oh my gosh, it was it was really fun. And I had Christmas nails, so I was rock walking around with Christmas nails before Halloween, and everyone's like, my nail lady was like, Why are you getting Christmas nails? And I was like, It's a movie, you have to film it, you know, out of order. Like, um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> oh bless you again. I'm sorry, it must be the dust from the part, the dust from leftover from the holidays. Mm -hmm, for sure. Anyway, I think it's fantastic, and also I am a when it comes to horror, horror and I don't mix, unfortunately. <laughs> you get scared, huh? Oh yeah. yeah, like I can I can tolerate Universal Studios, um, Beetlejuice, and like the walk around characters, mm -hmm. but like. When it comes to like horror thriller stuff, I get very scared very easily. I, and when I saw the Nosferatu man with the nails, I'm like, oh boy, Nosferatu. <laughs> oh yeah, he's very creepy looking. That took the prosthetics on him felt like it took forever because and they were amazing, like his long stringy hair and his creepy nose and his fingers. Um, but yeah, this year is a really exciting year for holiday horror because there's that like. Mm -hmm. There's that St. Nick one. I'm not, I keep seeing a billboard and it's kind of like a hot Santa Claus looking all menacing. I have no idea what that's about. But um, yeah, I feel like the holiday horror this year is going to be, uh, there's a couple out there that are going to be really fun. 
Ours included, awesome. obviously. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's get, I know we have a little bit of time left. So what are some of your favorite social media channels to connect with your fans? Ah, I do all the social medias. So there's Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Um, I guess I even have a Reddit. There's Facebook and all of my stuff. If you just look up Cody Renee Cameron, it should all pop up. Um, or all of my usernames are, hey, it's code E, C-O-D-E-E, like code red, code E. <laughs> and um, you can find me there. And yeah, I mean, I don't just do movies. I create my own TikToks. Uh, a lot of it is original content. My girlfriend, Darren, and I do sketch comedy, but it's mostly like motorcycle stuff. Um, I have my uh, my CDL permit, so there's some like semi truck stuff on there, and uh, and then obviously a lot of hot girl stuff, you know, because we're keeping it on brand. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, however, for me, I can do TikTok because for the life of me, because I know I would go down that rabbit hole. It is a rabbit hole for sure. It'll it'll take up a couple hours of your time if you're not careful. All righty, Cody. So where can I find the Twelve Slaves of Christmas? And where can I find Maya CE and also finally all your social media? Yes. Um, 12 Days of Christmas should be out December 16th on fullmoonfeatures.com for sure. And then we also have a deal with like Amazon Prime and all of the streaming networks. The movies usually come out on Full Moon Features first and then they come out a week or two later on the other platforms. But because it's so close to Christmas, I'm not exactly sure what our plan is. But if you just Google 12 Slaves of Christmas, I'm sure it'll pop up somewhere and the internet will tell you if I don't know. And then um, Mayans, you can watch on FX um, and Hulu. Um, yeah, we start filming season five, but you can watch me in season four um, from last year. And wait, what was the other question? <laughs> El Camino, El Camino. Oh, El Camino. Um, El Camino Breaking Bad movie was on Netflix. I think it still is. Um, but yeah, if you Google that, I'm sure it'll pop up. And yeah, I play Candy, and that's like the third role that I've played where I'm named Candy. So I guess I just look like a candy because I'm sweet. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, guys, have you missed an episode of the Jake's Take with Jake and Show podcast? If you have, you can visit our channels on Apple Podcasts, Deezer, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Podcast Addicts, Spotify, and Spreaker to catch up. It's Jake's Take with Jacob Elishar, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. Now, are you on social media? Because I'm on social media, too. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. And Cody, just to let you know, jake.com is celebrating its 12th year this year. Woo! That's amazing. Yeah, it is. I can't believe I made it to year 12. Yeah, your podcast can almost vote. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I can almost vote. But however, this the blog can. The podcast is still in its, in its year four. Oh, it's just a baby. Yeah, it is. Anyway, Cody, thank you so much for making me laugh. This was one of, I think, I laughed, laughed. This is the episode I laughed the hardest in all of my years of doing this. So thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to talk with me. I really appreciate it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, have a great one, everybody.